Okay, so Designer Pro, uh, there's several features here, and we're just kind of kind of do an overview of the features, and then you guys can ask questions on their usage and everything, and, and we can kind of explore what you guys want to know more about, and, uh, and at least you'll have an exposure to what they all are and how they work. So there's a lot of things. Let's let's start with one of my favorites. Um, we'll start a new project here. Because Connie just showed you guys lithos. And I like lithos. And, and uh, did she already show you the litho view? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, she already she took part of my presentation. Okay. Well, anyways, yes, the, the litho view. Did she show you the rotate? No. Okay. So. In Designer Pro, like when you've got the front and reverse buttons, right? Uh, on uh, the front, you can do the uh, uh, rotate. So sometimes when you're designing a long piece, it's actually a sign that needs to be viewed upright. And it's always hard. You've got to sit there and try to rotate it or, or twist your head in a funny way. And it's always difficult to do there. Well, now with Des in Designer Pro, you can actually just set which direction you want to rotate. And set that 90 degrees so that it orients uh, exactly to to that position that you're designing in. So uh, I imported a picture earlier to make a litho out of. This is a a band poster, and rotate it there. Size it up. So just like any other litho, except it's a little more graphic, uh, which can be fun. I'd like to see more movie posters and things like this done uh, with the lithos at some larger sizes, because I think it'd be really neat. Photographs are great and all. Everybody likes to see their family and kids and whatever. But uh, do some more interesting things. Go find some old movie posters and make those into lithos and sell those at the craft fairs. Those are going to be huge. And people will love them. So simple, easy, to, and but really, really, really cool looking. So happy to Alone on the spoon. Alone on the on the spoon. <laughs> if I could just go back and change the name now. All right, uh, let's go and design a, another quick project. So another cool feature um, is the pattern along trajectory. Pattern along trajectory allows you to take patterns and, and define a path and say, I want to put patterns to follow this path. So I've got this little vine pattern here. And let's make leaves follow this, this vine. So I'm going to need to just trace over it. And that's that's fairly simple. Just a couple arcs uh, to closely resemble the path. It doesn't have to be exact in this situation. And then you select the pattern trajectory tool, and that's this orange shell that's on this little slanted line. So you click on that, and it opens up this window, and it's got this information down here. It's asking for you to designate some patterns. And you can use two different patterns here. So let's put some leaves along this vine. So we're going to click the Add button. And then the leaf shows up there. And this is important because a lot of people get stuck at this point because it's like, all right, well, it's there, but I want to make it bigger or smaller. And normally in our software, there's things that allow you to make it bigger or smaller here. In this tool, you've actually got to go type in the dimension up here, but you can scale it. Uh, so you go in and type the size, so I want to make it a little bit smaller, and then you can change the angle of it too. You just have to manually input these in. So I want to put this in there, and then you've got the ability to tell it how many you want. 
and you can set the spacing too, or you can just have it automatically space it out, which that's what it will do by default. Then you can create an offset too. So I don't want it right on the vine. I want it to look like it's coming off. So maybe about a, a half inch. That looks pretty good. Let me go back to the 45. I think that'll work. So then I've got a, a two here, a slot two. So I'm going to take the same leaf just for this one, uh, and I'm going to add it to the, click the two and add it there. And I'm going to do the same thing, scale it smaller, and then set the angle a little bit differently. And this one I'm going to indent. So instead of starting at the end point of the, the line like the other one is, I can indent it in where the starting point of the pattern is going to be. So maybe about an inch. Oh, I indented the wrong one. I need to indent this one. And then I want to offset this one too. And I want to offset it on the other side of the line from the other one. So I did it 0.5 on the other one, uh, but if I want to go to the bottom side of the line, I'm going to have to use negative numbers, so negative 0.5. That puts me down there. So then let's add five of these, and I've got a nice little arrangement of leaves going along this vine, and I can even preview it here just to see how it looks, because I can do all of my depth adjustments right here as well. So if I want them at a quarter inch deep or I want them uh, shallowed up at the height and all this stuff, I can make all of those changes right here. So then you hit OK, and they then show up as patterns. So that vine's sitting a little on top, so let's shallow it up. <laughs> oh, shall on the wrong thing up. Get to the carving list. All right, so you see this feather around the, the vine? That's kind of obnoxious, so we can remove the feather. And Connie probably covered feathers, right? Uh, but in Designer Pro, did you cover the Designer Pro feather? That you can flip it or that you can customize it? That you can customize it. Okay. So this you can you can set all the way up to an inch feather if you want to uh, when you're doing feathers. On this one, we're going to just turn it off and say no. So we've got this nice vine here. And the vine is something that I had made, so I own that pattern. <coughs> So I can group all of this and then make this whole thing into a pattern. Put it in my favorites. Call it grapevine if I want to. And then now it's just another pattern. So then you can keep elaborating on these things as much as you want. Uh, Can add some grapes to it. <coughs> and then we can copy and paste that, make some more of them. Maybe flip this one so it's facing the other direction so they don't all look the same. Give them different sizes. And you can do that all you want. And you, then you can add other little details like little curly Q things that you see coming off of them. So these vine details that I made, 
I modeled those using our pattern modeling tools, which I'll cover tomorrow. I'll show you how to make these vines uh, and a bunch of other things. So that's a fun, simple little design. Now let's play around with the materials tool. So just like any other carving, when you want the uh, the designs to be raised up from the surface, you go and, and create a carved region at the depth of the, the carvings. That way they're coming up out of the wood rather than being feathered down into the wood. And I never do a carving, a decorative carving of any kind without applying some kind of texture to the back ground. And with the Designer Pro software, you've got an endless amount of possibilities for your textures. <coughs> Why? So this texture engine uh, allows you to kind of through some crazy mathematics on the back end create some almost endless styles that you can you can make. So it comes with a default. That's just the default and and uh, all these other ones that we've we've created and given them names. So like sandstone, stony, tree bark, water. Weathered wood, which weathered wood is a really popular one, especially with the sign maker guys. Those are the samples you got the other one. <clears throat> yeah, we've got carved samples of these because these are just the the defaults that we we created that come with it. But you can take any of these. It's like you know, I like kind of that water surface one, and you can clone it, and it'll create a clone of that, which then you can edit. So you can change these dimensions and. It's got H samples and V samples, which it stands for horizontal and vertical. So right now I've got kind of a horizontal effect on this because I've got uh, more samples vertically. But if I made them both the same, then it's going to kind of even it out. If I increase the number of them, then it's going to be a little more grid-like. <clears throat> so you can really mess with them and create all kinds of different effects. Then you've got octaves, and that's the kind of amount of noise in it, it's like the amount of levels that it is. So really, most of the, the words associated with these octaves and persistence and these kinds of things, you know, I could go into exactly what they all mean, but really it means go and plug numbers in here and play with it and, and see what you come up with and you can come up with some great, great things. So now I'm, I'm getting very brain-like looking. Uh, so you can endlessly play around with this and come up with some really, really fun textures. And a lot of times it doesn't matter exactly what the texture is as long as there is a texture. Um, and sometimes you want something a little more interesting. So now this one, now that I'm shallowing it up a little bit, it's starting to get kind of that almost hammered metal look to it. And it, since it's got a little bit of a blur, you almost get that kind of photographic effect where the background is kind of blurred and the focal point is, is sharp and in focus. And you get some really, really cool, fun effects this way. And a lot of times it, it really helps to pop the design. So you've got these leaves have some smoothness to them which makes them almost appear shiny here. And then with that background texture, kind of muddying up the background, especially when you put stain on this, if it's carved in wood, it's gonna make those smoother areas pop and shine while the background absorbs a little bit more darker color to it. And, and it's just gonna make your entire design stand out a lot, a lot more. So that kind of dynamic quality of your work is, is what's gonna make people wanna buy your stuff and they're Gonna come back and want to buy more, and tell everybody else to come by. When you when you clone that, how do you put it? Can you put a name with it? Yeah, yeah, you can. I didn't didn't show that, but yeah, you can. You just double click on it, and then you can type in this, 
So I'll call it brain. Yeah, when, after you rename it, you have to hit enter, or it won't accept the name, but you hit enter and then, and then it's in there. And then when you hit OK, you're, you're set. All right. Let's go ahead. There we go. Let's go ahead and just play around with that text tool while we're in here, too. So Angel was talking about you've got the ability to do the same kind of thing that we did with the patterns where we made them follow a path. You can do that with text in, uh, in Designer Pro as well. So let's draw some text that kind of follows these vines. So I just drew a simple path here. And we'll collect. So the decorate with text tool. So it's, it's this text at an angle on, on the line indicating that it will follow that path. And it opens up the text window, which, Connie, did you go over text at all? Yes. Okay. So you've seen this window already. Uh, Designer Basic has a different text window. Um, it doesn't have all the features that the Designer Pro does. Uh, and one of which is, is I can actually preview here the uh, the text that I'm typing, so I can actually see it on the screen. So, uh, I don't know, we'll call it from the vine or something silly like that. And then we'll select an appropriate font or something horrendous looking. Uh, that's good enough for our purposes, unless there's any objections to that font. All right, you can uh, you can actually type in and increase the size there, so you can design within this window. You can uh, adjust the kerning and the letting uh, if you've got multiple lines. So kerning adjusts the spacing in between the letters, so you can you can increase it a lot, which we don't have room to, or you can uh, even tighten things up if they're uh, spread out a little bit. With negative numbers, you can tighten it up. And of course, you've got the, the raster outline. We're going to just keep with raster here. So we're going to hit OK, and then we're got our text showing up. And I got a little bit too close there on my kerning, so let's go and adjust that again. Alright. And we're going to set this, because everything else is set at a quarter inch, we're going to set this at a quarter inch too. And give it a medium draft. It looks like we might need to raise it up, maybe 0.2 instead of 0.25, so it sits on top of the leaves. <coughs> All right. So that gives you a lot of flexibility, especially when you're doing sign reading, to, to do wrapped text to, to make it follow you know, a portion of your design or to just get really creative with your typography. Uh, another feature which I use mostly with text, but you can do it with, with patterns as well, is the edit envelope tool. Try to find it. Where's the edit envelope? When I plug into this projector, it completely rearranged my my menu. Is that it right above height? No. That's all right. Let's let's do it with a with a leaf. I mean, uh, uh, another grape here. <coughs> 
So here's a uh, these grapes. So you want the grapes all to look as different as possible. Say, we'll use the edit envelope on this. There it is, edit envelope. So edit envelope allows you to kind of warp your patterns or text or anything. So you can see the outline. Oh, I can stretch this out and I can make it drastically different. It's in a kind of a distorted or warp, warped way. It's called a distort tool in most other graphic software. Uh, so you can exaggerate it quite a bit, preview it, see what it looks like. And uh, Doesn't that mess with your turns and stuff when, uh, when you do it on text? It can, absolutely. So it it's something yeah, you know, the uh, typographic typographic effect that is is really good in some instances and, and other instances it's not. Uh, but it it can be very useful. Um, <coughs> Michael, do you, do you use that tool a whole lot? The edit envelope. Not a whole lot. I've used it. Yes. It's fun because you can add a variety. Like even the leaves, you can change them. Yeah, yeah. So you can go and, and add some variations to one pattern and make it look like it's actually different patterns that way. Did you pick that individual leaf? Did I pick the individual leaves? No, um, not not when you use the the trajectory tool. They are all. Only editable through the uh, trajectory tool. So if I want to edit them, I would just click on that tool again. I could go in there and edit them. But since there's only two patterns there, if I edit, you know, one or two, it, it's going to change all of them on that path. No, the only do way to edit one at a time is to go and place them all manually. So uh, when we get to the library, those of you who are going, uh, and, and we've got samples back here. There's some small sections of, of arch columns that have vines on them. So throughout the library, there's in between all the bookcases, there's these columns, and they're fluted columns, but they have vines carved all the way up and down each one of them. And so this is the, the same kind of method we use to, to get the leaves to follow along the vines. You just draw the vines all over and then you pick this, your leaves and then tell it to follow it and then it populates the entire column with leaves coming off of the vines. And then you pick two of them and you've got leaves, leaves coming off both sides. And then he went through and, and added some of these other little kind of details, these little curly cues. And then he also put some geckos in there and, and stuff. So they're really interesting. And so there isn't, two columns in the entire library that are the same. They're all we're randomly generated like this and it, it's quick and easy to do. So those are some of the the really fun design tools um, that are in the Designer Pro. So then uh, another one that's a really, really big one that it's probably the most popular tool of, of all of our Designer Pro features is what we call Vector Group. So Vector Group is like um, VCar Pro or something in, in the other uh, CNC software realm, which is what mostly, like if you buy another CNC, the only thing it's going to be able to do is VCar, you know, right off the bat, unless you go and invest a lot more in, in some software. Uh, so the v-carving is is something that's become really popular not necessarily because it's like the most really awesome way of carving. Uh, it's because it's been the most access accessible by everybody else who owns a CNC. So that's what they think CNCing is, is just v-carving. So we're like okay we'll add that feature too. So basically you have vectors and so Connie went over vectors. Vectors are, are the line elements uh, that you draw with the drawing tools. 
Uh, and this was just a really simple design that I, I threw together and we can even add to it if we want to. Uh, it's, it's nothing complicated. We're just drawing some elements here. Let me turn off. And then let's mirror that. So I could endlessly do this and, you know, a lot of like Aztec kind of designs and, uh, you know, the, the chip yeah, the chip carve stuff. You, you get a lot of uh, geometric kind of patterns that, that are really neat. You can get a whole geometric design that's, that's really quite beautiful. And with the vector group tool, you take those vectors and select the vector group tool. It opens up this window, which then allows you to designate which ones you want to v-carve. So this is basically doing centerline text in carvings. Uh, so it's got some, some quick tools here, like an alternate, so it'll do every other one that it sees. Uh, quick tool where you can select, and it'll just select all of them. I like the, uh, the alternate. I like to leave some areas not carved. Uh, but it depends on the design. Sometimes you want to carve all of them. Sometimes you just want to go and select individually the ones you want. And then you've got the choice between your 60 or 90 degree V bits. Uh, we'll just keep it on the 90 on this one and we'll select OK. So now it's doing the same thing that the centerline text does but it's doing it on whatever shape I've drawn. And it'll v-carve all of that in. So in a lot of cases, it'll, it'll be a much faster way to, to carve something, especially if it's really geometric based like this. Uh, and then this is also really, really useful for if you're wanting to do inlay stuff. Michael last year did an inlay presentation and his Examples are back there if you guys want to look in the other room. Uh, this is the way you want to do inlays if you want to do, or the, at least the epoxy and the, uh, the epoxy type inlay stuff. Uh, you, want to, you want to be carved your designs in and then you go and apply that stuff and sand it down and it will be perfect. It looks great. You can do the curved dome shape and everything. Are you making a block stop? You can, because you can use our conforming vector uh, tool if you have that as well. So he was asking um, if if you could put that on like a domed box top. So I'll I'll go add a uh, a dome here just from our domes that Connie was showing you guys, and then I'll select. I'll select my vectors. Oh, I can select the whole vector group and hit conform, and it'll follow that dome now. The what that? No, that's that's part of Designer Pro. Yeah, that's part of the Designer Pro feature set. And it's probably the most popular of, of the Designer Pro the feature set. Um, <coughs> what's the add-on? Designer Pro? No. No, this is this is included in Designer Pro. It's not an add-on. Yeah, it's not an add-on at all. It's, it's, it's included in, everything I'm showing you here is included in Designer Pro. So those are the major features with Designer Pro. There are a few other smaller features. Uh, some of them have to do with, you know, the ability to use other bits like the long carving bits, and the three sixteenth, or I mean the one thirty second inch, the tiny little uh, carving bit. Uh, we've got the three um, D puffing tool. So if you have the three D modeling suite, it opens up more uses of that. You can use those on the your your raster text and, and other things. Uh, but these are the major features that, that most people are using. There's tutorials on all of this, yes. 
There isn't any piece of software that we've ever made that I haven't made at least two tutorials on. And there's there's a tutorial, at least one on each one of these features, some of them that have more than one on them. So, uh, so do we have any other questions on Designer Pro then? You guys want to know anything more on how or why you'd use some of these features or do they all just mystify you and it's like, well, that's neat, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Be honest with me and, and let me help you figure out what to do with it. I was trying to create a curved line mm -hmm. and then uh, I, was, I, had it, I wanted it to taper to a fine point on each end and a little bit better in the middle. With the with a V cup, yeah. Oh, we've actually got a really uh, really simple way to do that. So if you draw a curved line, and you can just use your spline tool here. Uh, well, let's draw a better curve than that. I don't like this my tool. I'm drawing with my tool. <clears throat> okay. As I simple S curve, we've got these uh, features here. They're called depth profiles, and it, it looks like a little chisel in a canoe. Yeah. You click on that, and it's got that. So you you want to taper to the ends. Uh, and have it fatter in the middle. There's a V carve option right there. You can set the depth of it. So, and then it'll just automatically do that for you. The right side is ball nose, left side is feet. Yeah. So on the on the depth profiles, you do have a ball nose option. You can do the same things with the ball nose bits. I think there was really the right side. All right. That's amazing. <laughs> And then you even have the ability to edit that with this, this little known tool called the route tool. It allows you to move the center point of that. So if you want it to taper longer on one end than the other. It's called the route. Yeah, it's called the route tool. It sits up next to your, your text, the T, blue T. And it's been there since 2008 at least. Yes. And uh, well, when you finish it working, <laughs> well, what's funny is that I'm the one that, that discovered that that tool existed uh, when I, back when I was doing some tutorials, uh, and I was like, oh, this is neat, because of course doing the tutorials, I, I play with every single button to figure out what everything does, and I'm using an internal beta piece of software there, and I find this tool, and I'm like, that's really useful, and so I do a whole tutorial featuring it, and I show the the software engineers and everything, they're like, we haven't released that tool. It's like, it's not ready yet. I'm like, well, it worked perfectly for me. <laughs> so I've, I've done that with a number of tools. I've kind of forced their release by me just playing around with it and, and uh, doing a, a tutorial on it. And then, and I then. I think I did a video tutorial uh, on, on the grind tool. I use that. In other programs, they call that Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty pretty neat. Yeah, nice to know it's there, right? Yeah. That's all it does, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people just don't really take advantage of the uh, the V carving capabilities of the Carverite machine, which to a point makes total sense because it carves things amazingly well. And when you can actually make a a full carving rather than just, you know, some V carve scratches. Like when you go to the antique stores That's what I was trying to do right there. Yeah. 
when you go to the, the antique stores and you're looking at antique furniture, there's, you'll find a lot of stuff with chip carves in it, with this kind of V V groove stuff in it. That was the budget furniture for the peasants. Yeah. The stuff with the carvings on it was the cool stuff. Hey Joe. Yeah. How would you use? Would you use like a one of the backgrounds or something? If you wanted to make a cheap piece of wood that you carved into it to make it look like, and then you could stain it and make it look like Boston maple or something. That you could do that kind of stuff. Man. Would you use like a wood grain thing? Some way to manipulate that? Uh, well, with those textures, um, we've got the the kind of the, the wood grain. It's the uh, sandblasted wood grain textures, is, or we call it weathered wood, but the sign makers call it sandblasted. Uh, you can add those kinds of textures to the background. Yeah, you'd have to make uh, them all different to do that. So I don't know how you would make a spalted look. That would be a finishing technique. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm talking more of how the, there's the rotted, the places where it's you want rotten. You want to add some, some knots and stuff to it or something like that. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a good technique. It, it really is. Uh, another way, just since we're uh, we're doing stuff here, so uh, Google Images. Is everybody familiar with Google Images? When you search on Google, you got the tab to select images so you can find pictures of things. Uh, so if you want like a wood grain effect, but it has some knots and some swirls to it, and this is a little bit more character, you can go and find an image of that and make sure it's not watermarked and owned by somebody else. Um, and then download that. I'm just going to drag it to my desktop here. So I'm going to import this now as an image. So just like a litho pane, it's going to automatically give me this depth interpretation. But instead of making a litho or something out of this, I'm just going to use this as a texture whenever I want to in my background. I'm just going to add it to my favorites. So you can do this with anything too. Like uh, a few years ago, Doug Hafner did a presentation at our conference, and he was taking pictures of the carpet and then importing it in and then making it into backgrounds for the signs he was designing. Uh, pattern marker. <laughs> so now I can put that wood green and just like with my other textures I need to set the depth. Depth's good and then lower it. So it sits behind, but now I've got this wood grain pattern with uh, with more curve and character to it than just straight wood grain. It's got knots in it over here. And you just copywriting that, right? You can't use it now. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably do that on the street. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 Well, to make them like lay on top of each other. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, you can do that. It because they're all within just a a region, so I can draw as many regions as I want and and apply as many of them as I want. So out in the other room we've got I've got an example where I've got multiple boxes that are displaying all of the, the default textures and they're all that was all one project. So yeah you can apply as many as you want. All right, so any other questions? You guys want to take a break and uh, let Wayne entertain us for a while with his presentation. All right, let's do that.